Our October and November 2025 computer science exams are right around the corner, and this is a prediction video for computer science 9618. On paper one, what can you be, almost be guaranteed to see? Without a doubt, let's cover those things first. That's going to be binary, denary, hexadecimal. This is worth a minimal amount of points, but it's been on every computer science exam since the beginning of time. Something else that's almost guaranteed is gonna be all of topic eight. These are your relational databases, your entity relationship diagrams, and SQL. You wanna be familiar with those. Make sure you know how to normalize a database. Make sure you know how to draw an entity relationship diagram and know your SQL inside and out because those are going to be worth a lot of points on the exam. The next thing I wrote down is embedded systems. This is becoming very popular on the 9618 exam, so make sure you're familiar with those. Also, make sure you're familiar with a monitor system and a control system. Make sure you know the difference between those. I think this year they're going to give us a description, and you're going to read that description. You're going to have to decide is it a monitor device? Or, is it, or a monitor system or a control system. Now you may be reading it and you may be saying, well, it could be both. In that case, pick one and then in your explanation, tie characteristics of the monitor system or control system to the scenario. That way you can get your points because it may fall under both. The next thing I have is assembly language and trace tables. It's either gonna be very large or it's gonna be very short. You want a really large one. And if you have rows left over, that is okay. Sometimes they give you too many rows. Now, the assembly language you wanna be familiar with before you walk into the exam. Don't go into the exam and say, well, I'll figure it out. If uh, you know that shows up on the exam, I'll look at it there. Those reference sheets are almost a full page uh, long. You wanna be familiar with it and simply use that as a reference if you get stuck. The next thing is bitwise manipulation and or in Zor with bitwise manipulation. Make sure you're familiar with that. Those will be worth a few points, but it should be something you're able to do. Binary shift, uh, left and right, could also be on the exam in place of bitwise manipulation. Usually they don't do both, but they could. They could, so make sure you're familiar with both, but those will be minimal amounts of uh, points. Now, the next thing I wrote down is libraries. I haven't seen anything about dynamic and static libraries in a while, so I think we're gonna see that. I don't think they're gonna ask us for an example. I think they're either gonna give us a scenario and ask which type of library should be used. Well, you could really choose either. Static libraries are great because they're fast, because they're built into the program, the downside, downside to that is, though, it makes your program larger. A dynamic link library isn't part of your program, so the program's smaller, but it's linked to the program and you have to call it, which could slow down the speed of uh, the program. So make sure you're familiar uh, with those. The next thing I haven't seen in a while, and I think we're gonna see it this year, is a first pass and second pass assembler. So make sure you are familiar with those, and I think that's everything you're gonna see on paper one. Paper two is a problem solving paper. And one thing you're gonna see is variables. You're gonna get a description or an example. If you get a description, you're gonna to have to write a variable name. So choose an appropriate variable name. If they give you an example, you're gonna to have to uh, figure out what the data type is. And there are six data types you need to be familiar with. The uh, first two are string and char. String, anything in double quotes, including numbers. If you see a number in double quotes, it's not an integer, it is a string. Anything wrapped in single quotes, such as a single digit or a single letter, that's gonna be char, which is character. The third one is gonna be integer. This is a whole number, positive or negative, not wrapped in double quotes. Uh, you have a real, uh, which is a number with a decimal. You're gonna have Boolean, true or false, and then you're gonna have the date format. Now, the date format on paper two follows the day, month format, not month, day. So November 1st would be written as one slash 11 and not 11 slash one. The next thing you're gonna be familiar with is state transition diagrams. I suspect that this year, we're gonna have to draw an entire state transition diagram. The next thing is one of the three abstract data types in AS, stats, queues, or linked lists. Now, I think they're going to ask us to fill out a linked list, drawing those pointers, and that's because I think on paper four, 
they're going to implement stacks and queues uh, together because they haven't done that yet. And I think this year is the year that they do that or that's what I'm predicting uh, anyhow. So the next one is writing to a file. When you write to a file, are you writing or are you appending? Writing means we're going to get rid of all the contents. We're starting fresh. Appending means we're adding on to existing data. If you're going to open the file to read, open it for read. So read, write, and append. The last thing I think you're going to see the big problem is going to be a bubble sort using a 2D array. They have not asked this since the very first inception of Computer Science 9618, which was a few years ago. Last year, they asked about a bubble sort using a 1D array. This year, I think we're gonna see a 2D array uh, bubble sort. And make sure you know pseudocode. You cannot write a high-level language on paper two. If you look at the 9608 exams, it said programming language, and you've seen answers written in a high level language. VB.net, uh, Python, and Java is currently what's available in 9618. You cannot write that high level language code. You have to write pseudocode. So make sure you're familiar with pseudocode. And if you are, I think paper two will go just fine. But those are my predictions for paper two. Let's talk about paper three. Paper three is the advanced theory paper. And one thing you're gonna see on that is gonna be mantis exponent. Now remember, normalizing the mantissa means the first two bits are different, meaning one zero or zero one. One zero for a negative number, zero one for a positive number. Remember also, both the mantissa and the exponent, both of those are in two's complement. So it's a little different from uh, other parts. That's the one that Cambridge follows. The next one's gonna be protocols. I think we're gonna get descriptions. We're gonna have to write the most appropriate protocol. Jimmy's trying to view a web page, hypertext transfer protocol. Jimmy's sending an email. That's gonna be simple mail transfer protocol, SMTP. Receiving email is the pop, uh, post office protocol, POP3. Uh, then there's uh, FTP, P2P, make sure you're familiar with those. I think in the same section of that test, right after that, they're going to ask us about the four layers, application, transport, uh, internet, and uh, the data link layer. They're also going to ask about packet and circuit switching. I think we're going to have to give some examples of circuit switching. And one of the prime examples of circuit switching is a video conference. Those packets cannot arrive out of order. They need to arrive in order. So we're going to have a dedicated connection while that video conference is going on. Another one is going to be a I, building the, or declarative programming, building that knowledge base. Uh, I strongly recommend you spend time using Prolog because Cambridge models their section of that of those questions right after uh, Prolog. So make sure you're familiar with declarative programming. I think the last or the next thing we're going to see, not the last quite yet, is going to be a linked list. I think we're going to have to program this uh, from scratch. Now you may be saying you said paper two was a linked list. Paper three is gonna be a linked list. Yes, but you're not just going to be able to draw the pointers. I think you're gonna to need to update the pointers and I think you're gonna to need to implement a linked list using a 1D array from the description they give you. Something that I don't think is gonna be on the exam but that you wanna review is direct access or a random file. Make sure you are familiar with this. They asked it last year. I don't think they're gonna ask it this year but why not be prepared for everything. I think we're going to see reverse pulse notation. I think we're going to see BNF and stages of a compiler. So be familiar with those as well. Now for reverse pulse notation, the RPN, be familiar with how to eliminate parentheses and the order of operations and how to use it using a stack. I do have videos on those if you need them. I think the last thing we're going to see is object-oriented programming using pseudocode. I don't think you're gonna to have to declare uh, any objects using pseudocode. I think they're gonna give you a class and you're gonna to have to declare all those attributes as private. They could also ask you about the terms though, encapsulation, polymorphism, which is you're overriding, you're overloading, uh, a class, an object, an instance of a class, which is simply uh, an object based on a class. I think that's everything you're gonna see for paper three. Paper four is the big one, two and a half hours, and this is where you get to use your high level language. Now, a question that often comes up is, how many times am I allowed to test my code? 
as many times as you want. Whatever IDE you've been using, that is the one you should be using for paper four. Remember, it has to be Java, Python, or VB.net. It cannot be any other high-level language. If you do that, they're not gonna grade your exam. You're gonna earn an automatic U. You're, when you walk into the test, before the test begins, your test examiner should give you your evidence document and the uh, text files that you are gonna be working with. One of the questions will definitely be using a text file. You're either gonna have to read from a file or write to a file or possibly both. Now, if you're writing to a file, make sure uh, you're opening it to either write or append. That, that's different in the high level languages. If you're appending, make sure you're not overwriting the pre-existing uh, data. Now, if you, for some reason, mess up your uh, text documents, just ask your examiner for another copy. They do have those on hand. Uh, the next thing that you're gonna need to do is going to be an abstract data type. This year, I think we're gonna see queues and uh, stacks working together. I think what we're gonna see is we're gonna to have to uh, take some data, put it into the queue, place it in the stack, and then pop from the stack to reverse the queue order. I don't know why I think that, but I just, I feel like that question is coming. Uh, they've already asked questions about a binary tree two years in a row for object-oriented programming. They've already asked an object-oriented programming for a linked list. So I think this year, if we don't see object-oriented programming for a stack or a queue, I think we're gonna see them implemented together to cover two abstract data types. And that brings us to the last question, which is gonna be object-oriented programming. Now, the object-oriented programming, the days of just having one class where you declare the class, the constructor, your set, your get methods, and then creating objects, I feel like those days are gone and have been left behind because they're starting to increase the difficulty. So I think this year, when we do our object-oriented programming question, it's gonna have inheritance. We're gonna have a second class inherit that first class. If you can declare a class, you're looking at three to five points for making your attributes private, creating your constructor, and declaring the class. Nothing that you can't handle. And then they're gonna have you write set methods or get methods. Those are also easy points. Make sure you're familiar as well as creating an array of objects. Because I think if they're gonna use inheritance, they're also gonna use an array of objects. I think that's everything you need to know or what I predict to be on paper four. One thing I forgot to mention for paper four, and it's pretty important, is string manipulation. Left, right, mid, and substring. I think you're gonna need to use that when you're working with the files they give you, either reading from a file or writing uh, to a file. Now I do have videos on string manipulation, how to use it. I have several paper four questions as well as full paper four walkthroughs. So if you need them, make sure you use them. They're there and they are free. Now on the day of the exam, you may be feeling stressed. You may be feeling overwhelmed. You may be experiencing that right now before the test, but here's what you have to remember. You walked in day one knowing nothing. It was probably a lot of you know, trouble to just simply output hello world. But think about how much you've de developed and grown as a programmer. You've gone from outputting simple messages to doing abstract data types, queues, stacks, linked lists, binary trees. You're able to use recursion. You're able to write to a file, read from a file. You can work with 1D arrays, 2D arrays. You can do all this advanced stuff. So when you take this test, don't think it of it as Cambridge assessing you. Think of this as a chance to showcase your skills. Hope you guys found this prediction video helpful. If you did, please take a moment to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to help the channel grow. And we'll see you guys in the next Computer Science 9618 video.